Welcome back everyone, it's Matsumus. I really appreciate you stopping by on today's video, hope you're having a good day. Uh, so today we are discussing types of weapons platforms that can be put and upgraded onto new infantry fighting vehicles or old infantry fighting vehicles for the modern day battlefield. Now you know me, I love my armor, I love my heavy main battle tanks, but I also love my infantry fighting vehicles and I feel that the infantry fighting vehicle world has been neglected on the main armaments front. Yes, we have the 25mm Bushmaster, the 30 30mm Radon of the Warrior and, and the Strikers and all the lav vehicles that are out there. But uh, we're starting to find that obviously these uh, armaments are not able to engage and, you know, defeat heavy armor packages that are out there. And it's interesting to see once you do a little bit of research that there's some serious firepower that can be placed onto some of these vehicles with some quite simple upgrades. Now, the platforms that we're looking at today are the Cockerill 3000 series and some other modular bases that are out there that can be given to just about any vehicle um, out there today. They can be produced in such a way that they're modular, uh, very easy to swap in and out. And Cockerill is actually made by the CMA group, uh, or CMI group now known. Uh, the headquarters is in Belgium and they do all sorts of stuff. They maintain energy, defense, steel making, all sorts of things. Uh, but part of the CMI group is the CMI defense industry and they've been very, very good at producing these kinds of technology. Through its Cockerill product range, the CMI Defense is today one of the most undisputed technological leaders in multifunctional high power weapon systems for light and medium weight armored vehicles. Since the 70s, CMI Defense is recognized as the world leader in 90mm caliber gun systems, two of which are the Cockerill Mark III M1A1 and the Cockerill CSA 90LP turret, and the Cockerill Mark VIII 90mm gun, with also the Cockerill LCTS 90LP turret. They're very, very good at producing turrets, guys, let's just put it that way. CMI Defense relies on its cutting-edge expertise in software capabilities to communicate between gun, ballistic computer, and any other communication suites that the vehicle may need be placed into the turret. Their expertise also ranges very specifically on ballistics of each of their component turrets that they put into these vehicles. For instance, they have a very good electronic suite that can communicate with the ballistics computer and the gun ranges from 20mm to 120mm caliber range, which is really impressive considering there's a wide platform of different uh, vehicles that these can be placed on. Let's be honest here guys, infantry led mounted and dismounted operations are in ever greater need of effective fire support. Peacekeeping, reconnaissance, counterinsurgency operations all have pretty much the same need. The thing is, this need must be met cost effectively using weapon systems that remain really flexible but also very effective throughout their entire service lives, key being service lives. This company is very good at aftermarket research, aftermarket service and support for their weapons platforms, which is today, when it comes to defense contracts, is extremely important. Of course, one of the most popular products from CMI is the Cockerill 3000 series, which was originally displayed at the IDEX convention in 2015 in Abu Dhabi. This unique system comprises of a single common core platform that supports a large variety of configurations and capabilities, from 25mm IFV to 105mm direct fire support vehicle. The Cockerill 3000 series is also very good at integrating with multiple different weapons platforms and technologies that CMI has already produced, for instance interaction with UAV drones which you're seeing right now, and a very advanced electronic suite to allow it to potentially get involved in the countermeasures, which a video I just did, uh, department and technology in the future, which is going to be really interesting. They may actually produce some active protection systems for, for you know, vehicles around the world. The Cockerell 3000 series is a unique new turret product from CMI Defense. It was conceived to deliver really good levels of value to the user and also delivers a really good day and night stabilized high precision weapon system capability which is also single modular, which basically means it's a common core platform that provides operational commonality between most vehicles. Its interchangeability accepts a wide range of weapon types and calibers, from 25mm to the 105mm NATO standard tank gun. In its standard form, the Cockerell 3000 series provides a full digital weapon stabilization and computerized fire control to deliver very high target hit probability. Thermal and day sights permit 24 hour operation whether the vehicle is static or moving. The user can select ballistic protection up to Stanag level 5. In short, the Cockerell 3000 series does pretty much everything the modern soldier would expect it to do as an infantry fighting vehicle or support vehicle in support of those infantry fighting vehicles. 
Depending upon configuration, the 3000 series may be integrated with wheeled or track chassis weighing as little as 20 tonnes. This means high tactical and strategic mobility without abandoning protection. CMI Defence delivers total through life support to the 3000 series product, which again is so important today when it comes to money, money, money. This includes advanced trainer simulation systems, PC based and embedded via potentially mobile apps, tactical training centers, spare parts, training services, etc, etc. The 3000 series is quite a radical departure from traditional turrets that are out there today. As such, it offers really low user costs, greater confidence and high operational capability through its service life. In combination with General Dynamics European Land System's Desert Piranha chassis, the Cockerel 3000 series offers a really effective and flexible combat system to be used as an infantry fighting vehicle. In this occasion, the Desert Piranha was selected as the platform as it has successfully been trialled all over the Middle East. It is specifically built as a variant latest Piranha 5 for the demanding climate and challenging terrain of the Middle East. The vehicle has been extensively tested under grueling conditions in the desert and rocky mountain ranges. The Desert Piranha performs very well with its sophisticated drivetrain and hence provides outstanding mobility on and off road. The 3000 series combined with this makes it an extremely capable vehicle and the latter is becoming even more important with increasing number of missions in urban terrain. So overall guys, let's be honest here, this company really knows how to make some very capable turrets for most vehicle platforms out there. I love the fact that these are modular, which basically means they can put on just about any vehicle they need to. I'm sure most turret rings nowadays are quite modular in the NATO world anyway. Uh, it's nice to see Warriors are being upgraded with that 40mm as I already mentioned and I will do a video on it. But I think there's other capabilities and other vehicles out there that could be upgraded to bigger calibers and these kind of turrets too. Of course we do have the Striker with the beautiful 105mm main armament with its auto loader. But is there anything else you can think of that we could potentially upgrade? I mean honestly I think there is the capability of being able to give uh, for sure places like Australia newer more upgraded uh, armament. We do see with the Puma and other vehicles that are coming from Germany they're also going along the bigger better turret systems uh, but what about these 90 millimeters I mean these things are massive big old guns can really put a punch down uh, a lot of people disagree and say if you're gonna pick a vehicle to do a role it needs to specifically do that role and not multitask for instance if you're going to have an entry infantry fighting support vehicle then just have an infantry vehicle don't have a in-between tank killer and infantry fighting vehicle and I, I've got to disagree there's always a bit of room for that interim that in-between sweet spot where you don't quite need you know a vehicle that has a whole host of troops in the back but at the same time you still want enough firepower to provide support for those vehicles that do have that capability 90 millimeters is quite a punch and let's be honest here these vehicles are not designated to knock out heavy armor or really even heavier uh, infantry fighting vehicles in today's climate these kind of vehicles are going to be punching holes through buildings knocking out emplacements uh, really causing some havoc in potential airburst rounds that these uh, guns could fire for infantry support. We're not looking at engaging long range targets and armor, really. I mean, yes, its capability is there and that's what it's primarily focused for, but I don't think in the real world that's what these kind of guns would be utilized best for. Taking out armor is a great option for this gun, but overall, I think it's going to be a better feature for knocking out buildings and emplacements. Uh, and with the new ammunition that's coming out nowadays, especially with a 90mm gun, we could have some really impressive airburst rounds to engage even aircraft, uh, you know, heavy bunker or pillboxes and gun emplacements. But that's kind of where I'm at. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and let me know what you think of the Cockrell uh, weapon series and what kind of turrets you think each kind of vehicle around the world should have. Uh, I'd love to hear your opinion on whether or not you think the British Army should put maybe a bigger gun on some of our vehicles, the Ajax or the Warrior. Should we step away from the 40 millimeter and go bigger let's go 90 let's get the 120 on there um no i'm just kidding but guys if you want to leave me a comment i'd love to hear your opinion on this platform and you know its future capabilities and what you think it could go on to uh, if you did enjoy today's video please feel free to support my channel on my patreon page the link is in the description box below also i am on facebook and uh, also surprisingly on twitter even though i hate social media hope you have a wonderful day all the best and bye bye